welcome to another episode of Salt Air. My name is Tom Hatch. I am the creator of Salt and the CTO of SaltStack. Today I want to talk a little bit about the SaltStack enterprise architecture. A lot of people don't understand or they're not aware of some of the enterprise offerings that SaltStack has put together. We spent a considerable amount of time working with customers, working with open source users of Salt to try and understand what it is that they really wanted on top of Salt and then spend a lot of time making it so that we were able to expose those interfaces in a really good and consistent way. So a lot of what we see in SaltStack Enterprise foundationally is taking concepts that many of our larger and more sophisticated open source users had built on their own, combining those concepts and then offering them to a wide array of customers and users. And so when we look at SaltStack Enterprise, what we have is the normal SALT architecture that a lot of people are probably familiar with, with a master and then a collection of minions that are all tied into that master or many masters. SALTstack Enterprise sits above multiple masters. And those masters tie up into the SaltStack Enterprise system in a similar way to how the minions tie up to the master so that we're able to maintain a consistent continual architecture. What we're looking at is also the fact that the SaltStack Enterprise system, it has all of its interfaces communicating over HTTP RESTful endpoints and WebSockets. And so the SaltStack Enterprise can be scaled out and loaded up behind a web balancer. And so it's easy for SaltStack Enterprise to be able to deal with a large scale that multiple systems and larger infrastructures need to be able to work with. SaltStack Enterprise also comes with a Postgres database. That Postgres database, we've also been able to scale in numerous ways. Postgres has its own scaling capabilities built in. And so what we run into is that now inside of this database, we're able to save information for a longer period of time. We're able to make sure that all of the information that we're dealing with inside of the SALT ecosystem is preserved and more auditable. This was one of the first things that people asked us for. Inside of SALT itself, if you're running remote execution commands, it only keeps that history for 24 hours. And it's keeping it in flat files on the master. The master itself is made to be easy to set up, as easy to manage as possible, given the workload that it has to deal with. And so it doesn't require that you have a database directly connected to it. So SaltStack Enterprise gives you that ability to have a long-term audit control and audit trail for all of the commands that were executed. One of the other common situations that we ran into is that we would have um, that core DevOps or SRE team set up SALT and they use it extensively and they love using it. But they noticed that other teams wanted to have that power at their fingertips as well. But of course, those of you who use SALT understand that that's a lot of power. And so SaltStack Enterprise added significant role-based access controls. The ability to make only specific groups of minions of even visible to people who are logged into it, to limit what commands they can run. One of those core concepts that we wanted to expose inside of SaltStack Enterprise was the ability for that SRE or DevOps team to be able to write the routines that these other peripheral teams would be able to run. And so it makes it easy for that DevOps team to be able to say, yeah, okay, to uh, the night network operations team or the security operations team, here are a number of routines that you can execute. And the routines that you can execute are going to do specific things that are specific to information that you need to gather or their routines that we can give you to say, if you see something specific occur, push this button before waking me up at 2 a.m. Now, as we keep looking into the functionality of our enterprise platform, SaltStack Enterprise also comes with a user interface. 
It comes with the ability to schedule complex routines so that uh, we can schedule things with much more granularity than you can do even with the cron style system and do so in a distributed fashion. Something else that we're going to be talking about in more depth is that Solstack Enterprise is also coming with new security systems. When we look at SALT, SALT is an automation platform. But what we as a company and what SALT Stack wants to do is be able to solve complex problems with SALT and then deliver them in such a way that it makes it really easy to do things which previously in generalized infrastructure management were hard to do. And so this is where we end up also talking about the SecOps and security related systems that exist up inside of SSE. These security related systems allow you to do things like not only scan, but enforce in a real way configuration compliance against audits like NIST, CIS, and DISA-STIG, but also the ability to get a granular view of what packages and what software in my infrastructure has known vulnerabilities. And then, of course, it's tied to salt. And so if you're able to look at your infrastructure and say, this isn't the way I want it to be, of course, we're also going to provide that button that puts it the way you want it to be. That makes it easy to say, I'm going to update these packages. I'm going to change the configuration of these systems so that what I get at the end of the day is a secure system. Thank you for watching Salt Air, and I'm excited that we're going to be able to talk about a lot of the more granular features of the Salt Stack Enterprise offering, as well as the granular features of Salt itself in more episodes to come. Thanks.